Um, go with me to Acts chapter 7 real quick. Acts chapter 7. Uh, Stephen says something about angels, and we're going to look at angels in the Bible. Angels play a, a, a major part in the scriptures, and we're going to look at them, okay? Look at Acts chapter 7. Look at verse 53. Speaking of the nation of Israel, Acts chapter 7, verse 53. Who received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Um, when God gave the law to the nation of Israel, he didn't just do it by himself. He, he included his sons. We're going to see something about angels tonight. God always wants to include his sons and daughters. We're going to find out in daughters, but angels are men. He included his sons in his business. And when God gave the law to Moses on Mount Sinai, angels were there. We're going to see this. And when, 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 Steve, when Stephen says Israel received the law by the disposition of angels, they were the one who handed it over to Moses, and then Israel didn't, kept, didn't keep it. Go, to me, go with me to Romans chapter 8. So let's, let's look at when, when our apostle Paul talks about angels. Romans chapter 8, the first time the apostle Paul mentions angels. Now, this is important because Paul mentions angels eight, I'm sorry, 14 times in his uh, epistles. If our Apostle Paul mentions angels 14 times, that, that means it's something that you and I need to pay attention to. Um, 14 is 2 times 7. 2 is the number of perfect witness. 7 is the number of perfection, divine perfection. So there's something, there's a ministry there for the body of Christ for angels. And we're going to look at that. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. <clears throat> Who shall separate us? from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are counted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, and we thank you that we can come together as uh, members of his body and worship him corporately through the word of God, through grace giving, through music and song. But most importantly, Father, that we can uh, come together to understand your word. You ask us to come together so that we can understand what you have to say to us. Father, my prayer is that I can communicate the doctrine of angels as the Apostle Paul lays out in the scripture. And we thank you for all this in Christ's name. Amen. Uh, today we're going to look at the role of angels in our current dispensation of grace. Um, who and what are angels? What do they look like? What do angels do all day? You ever ask yourself that question? I, if you don't, I do. What do angels do all day? If there's such thing as angels, what are they doing right now? What are they doing right now at 720 tonight? Uh, oh, you, you got it, Arnie. We're going to look at that. We got it, Arnie. Arnie, been studying. <laughs> By the way, are there guardian angels? Is there such thing as guardian angels? And if so, do we have them today? And if we do, what, you know, how, do they, how do they work today? And if we don't, is there any, action, any interaction between us and angels? Now, again, the first time... The Apostle Paul mentions angels is right here. Look at chapter 8 of Romans and verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels. And when Paul is speaking here, he's talking about things that could separate us from the love of God. There are some things that could be in opposition to us when it comes to God's love. And Paul is clear that angels... We're going to see that angels are spiritual beings, heavenly spiritual beings. And in, in particular here, it's talking about the evil angels. There's, some, there's not only good angels, but there's unholy angels. And we're going to see how they work to, to, to oppose us when it comes to God. And Paul says nothing that we know separates us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Okay. Now, when I say he, he mentions angels 14 times, 14 is 2 times 7. Two is the number of witness, seven is the, is the number of divine perfection. And what, what Paul is going to do, he's going to witness to us 
the, perf the, the perfect understanding of angels. And we're going to look at what when Paul mentions angels so you, can, you and I can have an understanding of them, okay? Now, let's look at that. The word angel means a messenger from God. That's, that's simply what the word means. Uh, angelos is the Greek word. It means a messenger from God. When I say angel, we're, we're talking about somebody who is sent from God from heaven down to earth to communicate something from God, okay? Now, they have different names in Scripture. In the Old Testament, they're called the sons of gods. They're called, they're called gods with little g. They're called stars, and they're called morning stars. Uh, go with me. Get two passages. Get John chapter 1 and Genesis 28. Get, get John chapter 1 and Genesis 28. We're going to take a look at angels in the Bible today, and then we're going to see how we relate to them today. Uh, John chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 28. We'll look at John 1 first. Most believers don't understand the issue of angels today. And my goal today is to have you thinking about angels. In John chapter 1, look at verse 51. John chapter 1, verse 51. As the Lord Jesus Christ deals with a man named Nathaniel, a man who believed on him simply because he says he knew Nathaniel before he ever met Nathaniel. Nathaniel didn't have to see a miracle or anything. Nathaniel had a soft heart like you and I. He believed the word of God. He believed the Messiah. Look at verse 51, John, 51, John chapter 1, verse 51. And he, that's Christ, saith unto him, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, and he's speaking to Nathaniel, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open. Now that's important because um, Stephen in Acts 7 sees heaven open. So Nathaniel's going to see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Now, notice that when the Lord talks about angels, he says ascending and descending. That's important. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes to set up his kingdom, Nathaniel's going to be there. Nathaniel's going to be one of the, the uh, uh, little flock, the, the 12 apostles. When Christ sets up his throne on the earth, here's the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's going to set up his throne. And he says they're, the angels are going to be ascending and descending. Notice the, 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 the point of view. They're going to be ascending from his throne and descending from heaven. That's a quote from Genesis 28. Go back to Genesis chapter 28. Israel's father is named Jacob, and Jacob had a dream. You remember Jacob's letter. What Christ is speaking about when he comes to these angels and this governmental system that is going to be going on on the earth, he's, he's, he's dealing with something that Israel understands from their history. Genesis chapter 28, look at verse 12. Genesis 28, verse 12. Speaking of Jacob, and he dreamed a dream, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth. Remember Jacob's ladder? It was set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And what Jacob found out was that the place where he was having this dream and this vision was the house of God, he says. It was Jerusalem. And what you're going to see, these angels, this ladder, this vision he had, he understood that the place where he was standing thousands of years before the Lord came was the house of God, he calls it. It's the place where God would set up his temple, literally, in Jerusalem. Okay? And what you see is you see the government of heaven and earth being taken care of. Heaven and earth. But when it says ascending and descending, the place where God is going to set up his governmental system is on the earth, on earth. And it's going to be in Israel, in Jerusalem, Israel, okay? And so when, he, when Jacob has that vision, angels ascending and descending, and the Lord speaks about it also, angels ascending and descending, they're going to be taking care of the government. They're going to be in the heavenly places, but they're going to go back here to earth to, to have a council meeting with the Lord. They're going to have meetings with the Lord. We're going to see more about that, okay? 